We have an update on an Amber Alert that was issued this morning. Protesters are gathering outside the U.S. government office in Bismarck. Well, let's hope for some better weather today. Henry, are we demanding too much by asking for some sunshine? Jackie Buckley is back from the Morton County Extension Service to talk to us about microgreens. These little things right here. <laughs> Good yes. afternoon, Jackie. <laughs> we'll start your Thursday with some breaking news. We've had reports that Bismarck State College is under a lockdown. Thank you, Ron. Back here in North Dakota, the partial school board has voted to not renew the contract for Lewis Reese. From concerts to comedies to outdoor activities, there's plenty to do this weekend. Tomorrow in the test kitchen, we're making cranberry hot cross buns and get this, Kurt, including the glaze. No way. Yes, have no to have way. that. Good morning, Megan and Mark. Now, the weather isn't the only thing that'll chill you to your bones. Just want to show you that in some areas, like Kurt had said, we got about three inches. So you put that in there right here, it's about three and a half. But that will, of course, vary dependent on how much the snow has blown over. Now, at 5 a.m., the line was wrapped around the building, and now it's since died down. Now, Captain, are we expecting an active grass fire season this year? Now, I have my whole zombie, my brave face on, but I've had some time to work myself up, and I'm a little terrified. The Sagsvig neighborhood isn't growing, and the school already has low enrollment rates. Add the age of the building, plus $2.5 million in renovations, as just a few reasons why this school could be repurposed. And when the bus stops and this sign comes out, Make sure you don't pass it because you could be looking at a citation if you do. Jab, jab, cross, cross, cross knee, knee. So jab, remember jab, that. Watch Anita. Remember that. And knee. do that at the studio, Megan Mark, just once or twice. All right. Oh, back knee. to you. Coming up on the noon report, more people are getting locked up in North Dakota prisons. Find out what's being done to decrease incarceration rates. Plus, medical marijuana supporters rally to try and make the substance legal throughout the state. And the State of the Air report is out. Did North Dakota make the grade? The new report starts right now. Good afternoon. Welcome to the noon report. I'm Amanda Skripchak. Today is Wednesday, April 20th. We have an update on an Amber Alert that was issued this morning. Around 9, the Chrysler 300 that was involved in the search for Kensley Ava Leanne Olson was found in Minot along with the female suspect, Melinda Tweed. The child and male suspect remain at large. Kensley Ava Leanne Olson has black hair, brown eyes, and has a three-quarter inch scar over her right eye. Kensley was last seen at a residence in Poplar, Montana. Timothy Dornheim is described as a white male with brown hair, hazel eyes, and is approximately 55 years old. He is six feet two inches tall and weighs about 225 pounds, or 220 pounds, and he may have long hair. Please call police with any information. Witnesses tell our sister station Valley News Live that one person was sent to the hospital after a crash on Highway 13 near Wapaton this morning. It happened about 7 a.m. at the I-29 inter 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 interchange. A truck exited the interstate and turned west on Highway 13 when it was then rear-ended by a car. The car ended up in the ditch and when the driver was taken to the hospital. The extent of the injuries are not known. Bismarck police are investigating a construction trailer break-in where more than $8,000 worth of items were stolen. They say the incident happened at, 4, 000, at the 4,000th block of North 19th Street sometime between April 12th and April 13th. Police say a foreman called the police with a description of what was missing. Authorities say so far there's no suspects. North Dakota's prison population is on the rise. From 2005 to 2014, it was the fourth fastest growing rate in the country. To help stem that rise, the Incarceration Issues Committee has enlisted the help of the Council of State Government's Justice Center. The center is looking at the data behind the incarceration rate in order to figure out how the state can better invest in public safety. All around the state, we've been welcomed with opportunities to learn from law enforcement, from victim advocates, from judges about what's happening in the front lines of the criminal justice system so we can see behind the numbers. As the state can lower costs by using probation more often for lower level offenders while focusing prison space on those who pose a more clear threat to society. Our political reporter Max Grossfeld will have more on this story tonight. Attorneys for a Minot hospital are asking a judge to throw out a lawsuit that blames the facility for the largest hepatitis C outbreak in recent U.S. history. Trinity Hospital attorneys say plaintiffs didn't follow proper legal procedure and made allegations that are impertinent and simply untrue. An attorney for the plaintiffs says Trinity is trying to delay the victim's day in court. 
All right, it's time for a look at our midday weather with meteorologist Henry Blakes. Henry, it's nice and sunny outside today. It's looking to be a picture perfect day. Let's just hope it stays that way until the weekend. Yeah, we can only keep our fingers crossed, right? Oh, Henry? yes. Thank you. And we do have an update on the Amber Alert. Police uh, authorities say that Timothy Dor Dornheim has been located. However, the child is still missing. So if you have any information on her whereabouts, Kenzie Leanne, Ols Leanne Olson, um, please contact police on that. We'll have an update later in the show if we have any more information. However, now turning to politics, as expected, Trump and Clinton were the big winners in the New York primary Tuesday, and what may have been the big loser wasn't even on the ballot. Details from NBC's Chris Clackham. Next Tuesday's primaries are in Pennsylvania, Maryland, Connecticut, Delaware, and Rhode Island, and just might be the end of the road for, road for one or more of the candidates. Two Valley City men are holding a rally today to promote awareness about medical marijuana in North Dakota. The VC 420 rally is scheduled for this afternoon. Organizers are hoping to get support for a ballot question that would allow North Dakotans to possess up to three ounces of marijuana for medicinal purposes. More than 13,000 signatures are needed to get the issue on the November ballot. And today's rally starts at 420 at the Barnes County Courthouse in Valley City. Well, the nation's air quality is improving, but more than half of all Americans are still living in areas with unhealthy levels of air pollution. And North Dakota's air quality is actually decreasing. The report released by the American Lung, Lung Association finds that 166 million Americans live in areas where the air is unhealthy. Now, that puts them at a risk for health issues such as lung cancer, asthma, and cardiovascular damage. The air report shows six out of nine counties in North Dakota that have air quality monitors reported lower grades for particle pollution. Burley, Cass, Dunn, McKenzie, Mercer, and Oliver counties earned B grades this year, while Billings and Burke stayed with, the a, with a grades and Williams County was incomplete. Both ozone and particle pollution can cause these dangers for the American public. UND is trying to cut $21 million as the state faces a $1 billion shortfall. Today, you'll have a chance to give your opinion on the cuts at a public forum between 1 and 3 p.m. at UND's Memorial Union. UND Interim President Ed Schaefer will submit his final budget proposal to the state later this month. This isn't your ordinary pistol. It's a two-shot handgun called the ML-12 or Mini Launcher from Bruiser Less Lethal International. It's a weapon for military, police, and civilians, which fires a variety of less lethal ammunition, such as bean bags. Going hot. Tommy Teach came up with the idea after a close call during a road rage incident. I ended up drawing my standard duty weapon on him. And when I did that, uh, he finally stopped and looked up at about 10 feet and hit the ground. Uh, had he not done that, he would have been dead. While this weapon isn't intended to kill anyone, the rounds that come out of it go at about 280 feet per second, which can cause some serious bodily harm. Check this out. This is not something that can just randomly be shot at people like a paintball gun. It's an alternative to electronic controlled devices like tasers, which don't always work. An officer in Pennsylvania pulled out her taser to subdue a man who repeatedly attempted to steal her gun but was unable to because the man's heavy coat blocked the receptors. It, it could be due to drugs, due to uh, their body makeup, just it does not affect them. Uh, so we designed this, this product um, for the purpose of saving lives. Even though they're considered non-deadly weapons, Teach says they should be treated like all other firearms. There's one play in their playbook the Patriots basketball team takes very seriously, talking about domestic violence. You know, I think the biggest thing we, we want to try to stay away from is, is making it a joke. And, uh, you know, this is serious stuff and, and uh, it, it can lead to very serious consequences. And uh, we want that message out. Just no means no, guys. Coach Bannon and the players lead discussion through Coaching Boys into Men, a program that encourages hey, break, players to think about how they treat women and their decisions both on and off the court. And I'll try to stick up for what I hear, you know, or try to stick up for who I hear it's being talked about. So I just kind of say, hey guys, you know, it's not appropriate, you know, think about, you know, that could be someone's daughter. However, the Abused Adult Resource Center says domestic violence isn't decreasing. Unfortunately, we have media, movies, TV, whatever, that uh, sometimes encourages that or 
sort of shows that as, for instance, that's a good way to be a man in society. All women should be treated with respect and honor, and you know, violence and strength does not uh, correlate with manliness, so. Before the program, Horner says it was a topic they didn't talk about, but now has helped the team grow together. I mean, there's a lot of immaturity still, and this program has really helped us, you know, really boys to men, it truly did that. North Dakotans haven't had to do a lot of this so far this year. Erna Shook says she's lived here all her life, so she's used to winter, but admits she's more of a snowbird. I don't like to be out in it, and I don't like to drive in it. So I plan on staying home until the, until the temperatures come up some more. But not everyone can avoid driving when snow starts to pile up. Bismarck police say they responded to seven weather-related accidents. The North Dakota Highway Patrol reported four vehicle crashes in the Bismarck area. Drivers say they're taking it slow on the road. It's December. It's supposed to be here, I guess. It'll be nice for, for Christmas time. <laughs> An early Christmas gift of 5.1 inches of snow. It just makes you a little more festive, I think. As long as it's not bitterly cold and people are safe, I like the snow. White Christmas is fine, but I'd like to see warmer temperatures, no wind. Don't ask for much. <laughs> if you've been dreaming of a white Christmas, your wish has come true. The snow is here to stay, at least through the holidays. Reporting in Bismarck, Amanda Scripcheck, NBC North Dakota News.